Right. Welcome to Casual Politics, Lord Carrington. I'm very honoured to have you as my guest today. And I know you need no introduction. You've served under six prime ministers. Yeah, and really? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the only one, you're the only politician who served under six prime <laughs> ministers. <laughs> you were junior minister um, in the agriculture ministry from 1951 to 19. Uh, 50, uh, 54, and then you, you went to the Ministry of Defence until uh, 1956. You were the Admiralty of the House of Lords. You were the com uh, UK Commissioner <laughs> to Australia. You, you were house, uh, leader of the House of Lords until 64. And you were uh, the Defence Secretary from 1970 to 1974. You were the fight, you were never going to stop. You were the Chairman of the Conservatives uh, from 1972 to uh, 1974. And, you were, uh, and then you became the Finance Secretary from 1979 to 1982, following your resignation over Falklands. And then the um, General Secretary of NATO from 1984 to 1988. So, <laughs> so I'm going to start myself here. So my first question is, first, how did you get involved in politics and how, and how um, ambitions were you when you started? Well, I got involved in politics because uh, in those days uh, the House of Lords was hereditary and so I had a seat in the House of Lords and um, at the end of the war, having the war lasted rather a long time, and I, I, I thought uh, that, that was enough, and I decided that I would come into the House of Lords and get out of the army. And so that's where I started, really. And it was a very different place from what it is now. But that, that was why I came in, really. But my family have always been in politics, so I just did the same as they did. <laughs> and why, in your memoir, you don't mention your MC that you were awarded for the bridge that you captured during the Second World War? Well, you know, <laughs> my brother, no. yeah. and, um, and what was your, at first your reaction when you, uh, when you received the call from Winston Churchill and then he, uh, and then he said, um, have you been shooting patridges? So, and then he, he asked you whether you wanted to join his shoot. Well, I was very surprised that he, he well, I was first of all surprised that the Prime Minister, I mean, Churchill, with all his great glory, should bother to ring him. Then he junior person <laughs> up and speak to him at all. Very surprised that I, I would be asked to do a job. So um, it, it was a remarkable occasion for me. He was, um, I mean, in those days, I don't think people realised quite what a standing he had. He was a great hero. And um, for him, as Prime Minister, to ring a young man up and offer him a job was quite extraordinary. <laughs> Absolutely. And in your book, you mention as the best um, um, Peace and uh, wartime prime minister. You mentioned Winston Churchill's name, and as the um, yeah, this is wartime prime minister, and then as the peacetime prime minister, you mentioned Harold Macmillan. But why, why Winston Churchill and why Harold Mac Macmillan? Well, Churchill was uh, uh, so generous. I mean, there was nobody like him, and he was an extraordinary man. Harold Macmillan was an extraordinary man too. He was um, a very brave man. Uh, he was a very educated man. When in the first war, he was badly wounded and was uh, in no man's land, wounded in a in a shell hole, and he spent his uh, the, the, the being wounded. He spent the night alone in the trench reading Homer in Greek, <laughs> and he was, he was a very extraordinary man, and he was one of the most. Uh, uh, witty and amusing people yes. that I've ever met, and I think was a very good prime minister. And do you agree with his vi vision over Europe? I don't know what his vision of Europe was. Um, for <laughs> uh, the the, <laughs> the, uh, the entry of the United Kingdom to the um, com uh, to the mo uh, coming market. 
Yes, the common market. <laughs> and I mean, his problem, Harold Millen's problem, was to President de Gaulle. Yes, and, yes, uh, absolutely. And President de Gaulle vetoed the Veto. British entry into yes. the common market. And uh, I think that really upset him quite a lot. I don't think he would have wanted a Europe which was federal in the sense that so many people used to. I hope they don't so much now. But uh, he was certainly very much in favour of Britain joining the common market. And the fact that our UK's entry to the common market was delayed, do you think that it damaged in the, in the, in the sense that um, Germany and France now they've got a stronger voice in the European Union than uh, um, United Kingdom? Has. Well, have they? I don't know. Um, I, I think it's changed so much, the European yeah. Union. You see, what we were talking about in those days was a, a common market, and there was no suggestion of any sort of federalism or anything of that kind. I don't think that uh, Macmillan or Churchill or, uh, or Attlee or any of them would have wanted a federal Europe. They wouldn't have they thought or dreamed of joining a federal Europe, nor would we now. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and before you were a pro-European, but now you said that you, you have become more agnostic uh, um, about Europe. So what is that? Well, I think it's become rather different from its um, origins. I mean, you, it's become... Um, we joined the common market, uh, and uh, we had no idea that we were going to lose some of our own ability to run our own affairs. And I think in this country, people think that we're anti-European. I don't think that's true. I think what we are is anti-Brussels. <laughs> absolutely. And I, I think yes, that absolutely. people don't like the idea that this extraordinary body in Brussels should be uh, usurping some of the functions that we have always uh, held as our own. I think that's much more the reason. I don't think people are anti-European in the sense of anti-German or anti-French or anything. Not a bit of it. But they don't like being told what to do by Brussels. I must say, I think they exaggerate a bit because I think quite a lot of what Brussels does is originate from Whitehall anyway. <laughs> Yes, that's right. True, very true, very true. And uh, do you, so, do you agree with David Cameron's in uh, to uh, to opt for if Conservatives they get re-elected uh, to put uh, in an uh, in and out referendum or not? Do you think it's a good? Uh, well, I don't actually, to... because I don't think we ought to leave the European Union. I mean, I think what what we ought to do is to uh, is to try and as Cameron is trying to do. Yeah. is to put it what we think is wrong and put right. But I think the sort of threat of using, of, of, using, of, of, of getting out of the European Union is wrong. I think that's not what we should do. Let's try and put it right. <laughs> yes, it's, it's better the time to put it right. And uh, so do you regard UK as a substantial party or just a protest party? Well, I mean, UKIP is now very popular, yes. and um, a lot of people vote for it. I don't think they quite understand what it's all about, but in yeah. fact, it. But um, it, it very, uh, it, it's very popular, and I think in the next election, a lot of people will vote for UKIP. Um, I don't happen to agree with it. I mean, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think the right way to do it is if you think some things are wrong in Europe, well, try and put them right. But to leave Europe doesn't seem to me to be very sensible. Absolutely. To go back to your time in politics, you resigned over the Falklands uh, War, and you said that uh, we didn't have um, enough, we didn't have any cards in our in our hands. So uh, was it a failure from um, the ho the Home Office Department or from the government as a whole? What Falklands? Yes. Well, it was Judge General Galtieri. <laughs> it was a <laughs> I don't think that, I mean, I don't think it was failure on our part. I, I think you could say that, uh, I mean, people could say you ought to have foreseen it and all the rest of it, but uh, 
It's ridiculous to say that it was our fault. <laughs> it was, <yeah. laughs> so, so it was, uh, and so what, uh, why did you resign then? Oh, because I think what would have happened if I hadn't resigned, yeah. that, uh, you know, you're going to, we were going to war. I mean, not a very big war, but never yeah. mind it was a war. And you, if you go to war, you must have a united country. Yes. And the one thing you mustn't have is everybody saying, well, who's to blame for all this? Um, and that would distract people from what they were trying to do. And I thought that was wrong. And, uh, and uh, I was the foreign secretary, and so in the end, no one was responsible. So uh, I think the right thing to do was resign, and then nobody would be looking for a scapegoat. And, but in 1954, you, uh, you proposed your resignation over an affair, but then you withdrew it. But why you didn't do the same thing at, um, in 1982? Well, in 1954, it was a rather different situation. Um, but my boss, as the Minister of Agriculture, resigned, and I thought I ought to because he had. And um, Mr. Churchill sent for me, and um, I said I ought to resign. He said, Do you want to resign? And I said, Well, I don't want to resign. I think I ought to resign. He said, I don't think you'd better. So when Mr. Churchill tells you that, you don't. Yes. And if Margaret Thatcher would have asked you, would you like no, to? Well, I was in a rather different situation. <laughs> different situation. And uh, so, um, Lord Kington, what is different uh, today? Because war, it's not any more popular with the electorate, as you know better than anyone, than Margaret, Lady Thatcher, she won her second term because of Falklands War. But why that wars are not uh, popular with the electorate anymore? Well, they're quite popular if you win them. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, and, uh, and, uh, I also think that, um, <coughs> that, that you see, that she made a very courageous decision because uh, it's not very easy to go to war 8,000 miles away when you didn't know you had to. I mean, she, it, it was a very courageous thing to her to do. And I think she got great credit for doing that. And that's really why she did win the election, I think. Yeah. And uh, do you think that uh, a few months ago, uh, in the House, they voted to uh, intervention, another one, in Iraq? Do you agree with it? Well, I made a speech uh, saying I didn't think it was a good idea, so yes. I don't think I've changed my mind. No, you haven't changed your mind <laughs> since then. Perfect. And, uh, <laughs> and at your time, because you were junior minister and the uh, Minister of Defence, and you used and then you walked alongside Harold Macmillan, and uh, did you did you learn anything from him that it was useful to you when you became yourself um, Secretary for Defence? From who? Um, Harold Macmillan. I don't think one. <laughs> I don't think one does in a sense. I mean, the, the situation is always difficult. Yes. Um, I think one always wants to behave like Harold Millington because uh, he was a very generous uh, boss. I mean, I was an under secretary under him, and he was a very generous man. And um, one has to follow his example, but yes. I don't think otherwise one can. Really. And um, do you think? Uh, have you ever, th did, um, could you think that one day you will have a peacetime coalition, uh, coalition government? But as we have now, you mean? Yes. No. You, you never thought that no. you, you will have? I never thought it would happen. Yes, do you think that it is good for the country to have? No. No? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's much better that one party should run it rather than the coalition. Yes. And I, uh, because uh, two days ago, one of your colleagues, when you uh, were uh, Secretary General of NATO, um, Mikhail uh, Gorbachev, he said that we are, um, in a, we are in a new, uh, about to start a new Cold War about what's happening in, in Ukraine. So uh, do you agree with him, what he said? I think there really is a danger of that. Yes, I do. And um, I think that... Um, Mr. Putin is, is a, a formidable and rather dangerous character. And I think there really is a danger. 
of there being another Cold War, and what a pity that would be.